ran across something really interesting today. Seatbelt psychic. I don't know how we missed this. I have to start going back through old videos and really looking at these comment sections a little bit more closely. So you know how on Seatbelt Psychic, Thomas John says that, um, you know, it's an Uber ride. He's picking people up. He doesn't know who any of these people are. Um, he's reading their dead people and so on. And there's no way he could possibly know who these people are and so on and so on and so on and so on. Today, somebody brought to my attention a video it's on youtube let me show you which one i'm talking about this one here seatbelt psychic counseling a grief being brother on lifetime so i'm a medium do you believe in mediums i actually do to a certain extent in okay so I'd like to introduce you to this man who's in the back seat, who you're about to meet right now. Here he is in the comments. This was me who lost my brother. This was totally unexpected. Okay, no problem. He's outed himself. He's telling people who he is. But look at what he says. And let's go down to these, these um, comments here. Were you surprised by Thomas's reading? Were you pre-selected? I wasn't pre-selected. Were you on your way to work? Did you call Uber or Lyft? The reason I'm asking is because a lot of people getting into the car didn't have luggage with them. Apparently many of these people are selected by a casting director who sends a car for them to go to an audition, but they have no idea they're going to be read. Why doesn't the show just say that plainly? Now they... All they say is, Thomas has never met these people before. The readings are 100% real. See, I've seen per Thomas John in person. He's amazing. But they're not being totally honest about where they find the people or agreed to sign the release forms. Okay, this is from somebody who we've run into many, many times. Um, and a little further down, he says, you were right. I knew I was signing up for something regarding some kind of show. But I assure you, I didn't know it was this, and I was initially not too happy. But then, as you can see, once you mention my brother, I just crumble. So one of the things that we hear all the time is that these are people being picked up by a rideshare, and that they they didn't know that they're going to be on a show. I've interviewed other people and that were in that back seat. And it was very clear that they knew they were going to be on a show. They did not know they were going to get a reading, but they did know that they were going to be on a show. They, they applied to be on the show. They filled out paperwork weeks in advance before the show, which gives Thomas John or his Confederates that are working with him, which I don't think it's the show. I don't think it's Lifetime gives them weeks to look into the person's personal history, look at their Facebook page, look at Google them or whatever. And then when they get into the back seat of the car, they're able to relay some information to them. How hard is it to find information? Well, let's look how hard it is. So this guy is getting a reading from Thomas John and I'll put the link in the description underneath this video. And he's giving him a reading about his brother, about um, the, you know, the how he died, you know, and the grief this guy's really experiencing. And Thomas John just shares things that are brotherly, you know, they fight each other or whatever, you know, it's it's a things that you would, would be common for brothers to who are close together. To have shared. Let's look at this. Going back to the channel again. Here he is, clicking on his Generate. clicking on his uh, YouTube channel. What? How long did it take us to click on a YouTube channel? From going from YouTube to YouTube channel. 
five years ago, losing a sibling. This video is about my brother dying because he chose to drink and drive. It's sincerely depressing knowing that he died in a totally preventable way. And it's my hope that this video will prevent you from making the same mistake my brother made. They're all going through grief. grief. It'll all be okay. So that was really hard for him to find that information on this guy, right? Five years ago. Let's go back and look when the... Um, Let's go back and look at when he made this comment. Four years ago. So Seatbelt Psychic was four years ago. Four years ago. So he made the video about his brother and losing his brother and the pain and the grief that he experienced. And then he filled out an application to be on a TV show. He also mentions in the comments that he lives nearby. And he went on the show not knowing he was going to be getting a medium reading, mediumship reading. He thought he was going to be on a TV show. And then here he is on this TV show and he's ambushed with cameras in his face, multiple cameras in his face. He's more, and his grief is now being exploited against his will. He doesn't know that he's been hot read. He doesn't know that Thomas John has looked up his information days, maybe even weeks before he got into the backseat of that car. And now he's going to replay it as if he's talking to his brother, just absolutely exploiting this man's grief. This is cruel and it's manipulative. There is no way this is helping somebody. The only person who's being helped is Thomas John. Selling tickets to his shows, selling books, selling readings, selling this, this show. Makes me ill just thinking about how he's just exploiting this man. Very sad. People think it's entertainment. It's all fun and games. It's nothing entertaining about this grief. Exploiting somebody else's grief. Tom Strong's a grief vampire. He's feeding off their grief. Probably has a good laugh about it afterwards, too. After the show was shot that day, I bet you he went home and had a real good laugh. He pulled one over on these these people. See it for what it is.